Regardless of your social or political beliefs, have you ever sat down with your favorite cup of coffee to contemplate why you believe what you believe? Or have you ever had the opportunity to ask others why they follow a particular belief system and what they base their beliefs on? Many of us have minimal leeway to question things we are obligated, requested, or forced to believe. The opportunities to openly confront, confirm, and investigate the validity of our beliefs may soon be coming to an end and eventually become extinct. For some of us, the pressure to perform well at whatever we do offers few opportunities for us to think beyond our beliefs. So let's partake in a deep self-investigation to discover why and how we began to believe what we believe. And welcome to Four C's One Family. Suppose we fail to discuss concerns regarding our personal beliefs and those forced upon us by others. Or we allow our lack of concern and respect regarding our thoughts to become the target of those who have a mission to mislead us by corrupting the principles we rely on for cultural and social guidance by propagating broken and corrupted ideas. Asking questions that cause people to think critically about why they believe something can make them feel uncomfortable and cause them to keep their opinions and beliefs hidden. The truth is, they may be avoiding concerns they have but are not willing to admit. It may be awkward for some people to acknowledge that they have some issues with particular segments of their beliefs. Still, somehow, many things we believe have been absorbed or encoded into us without us even knowing, confronting, or questioning the belief. Most of us are naturally willing to believe opinions, ways of thinking, and ideologies from those around us we trust or look up to because confrontation is never considered or presented. It only involves trust, and it doesn't provide reasons to question opinions or judgments. We often only rely on social or cultural confirmations, which may later become converted into groupthink. Collective groupthink could quickly develop into a mob mentality that takes over us and causes us to opinionate and react like a herd of animals rather than entities that have the ability and hopefully the will to differentiate between what is correct and above all moral. During our childhood, most of what we were taught required us to accept what we learned as facts. This method was indeed the easiest way for us to have been trained because our educators didn't have to provide references just in case we wanted to confront information they presented. We only were required to absorb and remember information to be tested on later. For many of us to store data within our small brain space, we just needed to develop the ability to memorize what was taught, so we only had to regurgitate what our instructors taught on demand. The more accurate we became at repeating what we learned, even without reason, the smarter we were considered to be by those who requested that we internalize and one day utilize the information presented to us. A situation we may one day need to face is how we choose to defend our beliefs. It is relatively easy for someone to share and promote their reasons for a particular belief system through mutual cultural and social references to make their points more appealing or appetizing. However, most of what we believe and think we know isn't based on it, evidence, experiments, or observations. Most of what we believe is primarily based on conjecture from people we hold in high regard or consider authoritative figures to whom we couldn't or weren't permitted to question or object to. Our inability to question a belief or hypothesis impressed upon us could lead us to a confusing and unfortunate dilemma or obstacle when defending it. At first, when contemplating a thought or an opinion, much of what we conclude is, in fact, wrong. Now, let's take a moment to think about the times we finally discovered that beliefs we once felt were undisputed later turned out to be flawed. How did you reshape or form a belief or opinion? 
Maybe at one time you believed in the existence of Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy. And because of your education and life experience, I bet you learned from provable factual events and evidence and managed to reshape your beliefs and continue on with your life. I hope we all can one day sit down with our favorite drink to think about how we began to believe what we believe because if we are unable or stubbornly unwilling to improve or modify a belief we have that we later discover has flaws, we may already be members of the blind leading the blind. If you have found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. If you listen to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. The Four Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.